So, so dear brothers, uh, in Christ, we thank our uh, Heavenly Father for giving it another opportunity. You see, after uh, so many days to discuss uh, about his words. So today, we are going to see one uh, important uh, parable which our Lord spoke. We all know very well that uh, Jesus, whenever he spoke, uh, he spoke in uh, parables. And without a parable, he never spoke anything. So, more than 30 parables, our Lord has spoken. So today, we are going to see one parable that is uh, mentioned to us uh, in the book of Luke, chapter 15, verse 8 and 9. Can somebody read where? Luke, uh, chapter 15, verse 8 and 9. Either what woman having ten pieces of silver, if she lost one piece, doth not light a candle, and sweep the house, and seek diligently till she find it. And read. when read, read, please read, please read. And when she hath found it, she called her friends and her neighbors together, saying, Rejoice with me, for I have found the piece which I had lost. Very good, brother. So here, uh, Jesus uh, tells about a parable that uh, if a woman having, uh, you see, 10 uh, pieces of silver, if she loses one piece, uh, will she keep quiet? Uh, she will light the landal, she will light the candle, and she will uh, sweep her house, clean it thoroughly, and, and uh, search it uh, diligently until she finds it. And when she has uh, found it, uh, she will immediately call all her friends, it seems, uh, and tell them that uh, I have found the last coin, so you also rejoice uh, with me. Yeah, but then, if you see this uh, situation, you see the thing that is mentioned here, this seems to be very awkward. You see, it says uh, a woman was having, uh, you see, 10 silver coins, it seems. Uh, you see, and... Uh, uh, she lost uh, one silver coin, it seems. And as soon as uh, she lost uh, one silver coin, she began to search her house so diligently that uh, she lit uh, a lamp, you see, a candle, and uh, began to search it with a candle and uh, cleansed her house thoroughly. You see, swept her house uh, thoroughly, it seems. You see? And uh, as soon as uh, she found uh, the last coin, you see, immediately she began to rejoice uh, uh, and uh, go and uh, tell all her neighbors and friends, uh, saying that, uh, you see, I have uh, re received uh, the last uh, coin. Okay? So, imagine, will we ever do such a thing in our life? You see, even uh, imagine if we have uh, 10 uh, coins in our pocket. You see, if we lose uh, one coin, will we take so much of tension that uh, we will, uh, you see, buy a candle which will be costing more than a rupee, more than a single coin itself, and uh, we will search the house uh, so diligently that uh, we will clean the entire house, make the house upside down and search it uh, so clearly. And as soon as we get it, uh, will we go and tell our neighbors and all our friends, uh, that uh, I have lost, uh, you see, one coin among the ten coins. So you also rejoice with me. See, brethren, you see, if we do those things uh, today, you see, what will the people, uh, you see, uh, tell? Uh, people will tell that you are mad. Why? Because uh, if anybody loses one coin, and if they get uh, that coin, will they go and tell to everybody? Everybody will think that uh, you know, there is something, uh, you see, Foolish uh, among this uh, person. But here, that two men, you see, was uh, not even ashamed. Uh, and she, you see, told uh, to the neighbors and all her friends, uh, telling, you also rejoice with me. Why did, uh, you see, uh, she uh, tell those things? And why did she spend, uh, you see, uh, to uh, buy a candle? even to search her house, you see, and, uh, you see, uh, to search that coin until she finds it. Uh, she did not keep quiet at all. Why was that coin so much uh, important for that uh, woman? You see, we all know very well that uh, Jesus, uh, you see, spoke uh, in a parable. And uh, 
What is the meaning of parable? We all know very well that it is a hidden thing. And whatever Jesus spoke, it is a never direct statement. But whatever he spoke, it had got a different meaning. You see, it is never a direct statement. Each and every parable he spoke, it had got altogether a different meaning. Isn't it? So let us read Matthew 13, chapter 34 and 35. brother. Hmm. All these things spake Jesus unto the multitudes in parables, and without a parable spake he not unto them, that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by the prophet, saying, I will open my mouth in parables, I will utter things which have been kept secret for the foundations of the world. Okay. Jesus uh, spoke in parables to the multitudes, and what was hidden in the parables? Uh, the verse clearly says, but I will open my mouth in parables. And in those parables, he will utter things which has been kept secret from the foundation of the world. So in each and every of these parables which Jesus spoke, there is some hidden secret which was there from the foundation of the world. That means these are all things which was hidden in God's mind. The entire plan of God is there in this parable. So similarly, in this parable also, you see, God's plan should definitely be there. Dear brethren, we have seen, you see, the parable of the sower. A man went and sowed, uh, you see, the seed. It fell into four different grounds. One on the wayside, the second on the stone, a third uh, in between the thorns, and the fourth one fell among the good ground. It brought good results. So here also, if you see, you see, this uh, parable, uh, you see, dear brethren, has got a meaning. So, actually, you see, whenever Jesus spoke his parable, he spoke based on the things which generally happened in Israel. You see, the common things, you see, that happened in Israel. Jesus took it as example to show uh, the heavenly things, dear brethren. So, here also, Jesus was speaking about a woman having 10 silver coins. So, this is actually based upon the custom which was there in Israel. And what is that custom? That custom was the custom of marriage. During marriage, you see, the girl used to be given, you see, a certain bit of things as a token of love. And to prove that she would love the bridegroom uh, until uh, death, there were some tokens were given as to show our faithfulness to the bridegroom. Like for example, today, you see, in uh, India or in other places, generally we have what is called as a engagement ring. Or as uh, some uh, places, they, uh, they tie the thali also. You see, dear brethren, this uh, is uh, not only a custom, but uh, they have to wear it until uh, their death. So this signifies they love their bridegroom, you see, and uh, will remain to faithful to them to their death. So similarly here also, Jesus was speaking a parable <clears throat> which was based upon the custom of Israel. We all know very well, you see, Jesus spoke about the parable of the ten virgins. You see, so they were virgins and uh, you see, uh, they were uh, actually engaged uh, to the bridegroom. So in that parable we can see, you see, the virgins who were already engaged to the bridegroom went to meet, uh, you see, the bridegroom to get married. That means in Israel, whenever the marriage used to be fixed, it used to not happen immediately. As in our days, you see, today we speak and tomorrow, day after tomorrow, within one month or a few months, immediately marriage will happen. But in Israel, you see, first uh, the engagement would happen. And after a period of one year, you see, what will happen in Simsa? Uh, the marriage will actually take place. So in between that one year, the bride was supposed to take care of the things uh, which were gifted by the side of the bridegroom to prove her faithfulness. Some places they were given a white, uh, you see, cloth, and she has to stitch a robe with a golden thread embroidery that is mentioned in Psalms 45. That is also an example. And uh, how much uh, grand embroidery she has done, that is to show that uh, she would remain faithful to her bridegroom. You see, 
if the design was less, uh, that proved that uh, she loved only less uh, the bridegroom. If uh, the decoration was grand, that signified that uh, she loved the bridegroom very, very much. Uh. So similarly, here, dear brethren, uh, when the engagement is to take place, uh, the bridegroom is to gift the bride 10 silver coins and they is to place it on her head. You see, there is to be a band and upon the band, the cell, 10 silver coins used to be placed on the head, it seems. And it was the duty of the, you see, girl to take care of this 10 silver coins very, very cautiously. In case if she loses one of the coins and during the marriage, during the marriage day, she has to show it to the bridegroom. Imagine if the bride doesn't show this one, what will happen? Huh? The bridegroom and the bridegroom uh, people will think that she is very careless uh, with the things of the bridegroom. And how will she take care of the bridegroom in the future? And their marriage itself was supposed to be cancelled. Uh, so here, you see, that uh, silver coin was a matter of life and death uh, for that uh, bride. Hence, uh, as soon as she lost that coin, what did that woman do? She immediately, you see, lit a candle, searched her entire house, made it upside down until she found it. She kept, she could, did not keep quite at all. It seems to be so she searched and searched, and as soon as she got it, immediately went and told to her neighbors and friends. Why neighbors and friends? Sir? Because those days there used to be no WhatsApp, Facebook, Twitter, all this fast communication, social media. The only communication was the neighbors. In case if she lost that coin, immediately the news will go to whom? Huh? The bridegroom. Marriage will get cancelled. Who will tell? The neighbors and friends might tell. Thus, that is the reason in fear that immediately as soon as he got, he told, rejoice with me. I found the lost coin. Why rejoice? Because my marriage is going to get confirmed. Confirmed. Definitely it will happen. Why? What will happen if the marriage gets cancelled? Huh? Imagine if a marriage gets cancelled, huh? will somebody marry that uh, bride? Will somebody marry? Tell me, will somebody marry? No, very difficult. The other person who is going to come and search for that bride, they will put a question mark. Why? Why your marriage was cancelled? What happened? Dear brother, nobody would marry such a bride. So it was a, a matter of uh, Life and death, dear brethren. Hence, uh, you see, so uh, maintaining that uh, silver coin, polishing it, you see, and keeping it, preserving it was a very, very important thing. So, this is the background of this silver coins. Now, what is the lesson we have in this one, dear brethren? We all know very well that, uh, you see, the bride of Christ uh, uh, is engaged to. Jesus Christ. Now you tell me, who is the bride of Christ? Who is the bride of Christ? Church. Very good. We, we are the bride of Christ. The church. Very good, brother. Read, brother. Oh, brother, can you read? 2 Corinthians 11, 2. Can you read, oh, brother? Oh, brother, you're there? Okay, probably I think uh, mostly network is not there. Okay, Ashish brother, can you read? For I am jealous over you with godly jealousy. For I have espoused you to one husband, one husband, that I may present you a chaste virgin to Christ. See, that I may present you as a chaste virgin to Christ. You see? So, Apostle Paul tells that we are engaged to one husband, even Christ. So, the engagement between the church and Jesus Christ has happened. So when will the marriage take place, sir? It is at the second advent. You see, read. Revelation 19.7. Gopal brother, can you read? Sure, brother. Let us be glad and rejoice and give honor to him. For the marriage of the Lamb is come and his wife hath made herself ready. See, the marriage has come. It is not yet taken place. It is come. The time is very near. And the wife had made herself ready. My wife is made herself ready means what? She is completely prepared 
to get married to the see bridegroom. So how many how many coins were there? Ten silver coins, isn't it? How many coins were there? Huh? Ten. So what is the meaning of uh, silver in the Bible? You will see silver in the Bible means the word of God. Read brother Psalms twelve six brother Psalms twelve six. Uh, home brother, you are there. Home brother. Okay. Home brother, can you read? The Psalms twelve six. Old Testament, brother. After uh, what is Job? After Job, the word of the Lord hmm. are pure words, as a silver tried in a furnace of earth, purified seven times. Okay. Purified seven times. The word of God is a silver. It is, uh, you see, like a silver that is purified. How many times, sir? Seven times is the seven in the Bible means complete. So completely purified is God's word. You see, Jesus, before going to heaven, during the first advent, what is the gift that he gave to the bride? And went, you see, the bride was gifted the word of God. You see, the disciples came and questioned, no, how come John the Baptist disciples first but how come your disciples don't fast? What was the reply that Jesus gave? Jesus said, you see, huh? the people will fast when the, huh? when a day will come, the bridegroom shall be taken away. And uh, who will fast? The bridegroom shall fast. Therefore, you see, the bride huh? is the church and the bridegroom is, you see, who? It is uh, our Lord jesus christ and the gift that jesus gave and went to heaven you see was none other than you see huh? the word of god isn't it so let us read uh john 17 17 brother john 17 17 brother huh? sanctify them through thy truth thy word is truth yes very good sanctify them by thy truth Thy word is truth. So, word of God, that is the truth. So, these are the truth which Jesus gave to the church and, you see, and went. So, until Jesus comes, it is a responsibility of the church, you see, to keep it safe and secured, neatly cleaning it, polished, you see. Therefore, so what happened? So, church was given this responsibility. Read, brother. Read Matthew 9.15, brother. Go for brother. Can you read? Matthew 9.15. Hmm. And Jesus said unto them, Can the children of the bride chamber mourn as long as the bridegroom is with them? But the days will come when the bridegroom shall be taken from them, and then shall they fast. Okay. The bridegroom shall be taken. Time will come. So bridegroom was taken. And the bride was left with this gift. So suddenly what happened? You see, she was originally having these 10 coins. But as the days went on, what happened? She lost one of the coins. So when is that one? If you see, in the dark ages, we have seen about that one, no? During the period of Antichrist, what happened? This precious coin, you see, was totally lost. So no more was this precious coin with the bride. So immediately... She lost it, it seems. They ran. And uh, next, what happened, it seems? Huh? Where did she lose this one? Huh? What does the Bible say? Huh? In the house. So what is this house? If you see, yeah, the church is the temple of the living God. We are the house of the Lord. Isn't it? Read, brother. First Timothy 3.15, brother. First Timothy 3.15. Ashish, brother, can you read? But if I carry long, then thou mayest know how the host to be 
behave thyself in the house of God, which is the source of the living God, the pillar and ground of the truth. See, the house of God. Which is the house of God? If you see, that is the church of the living God. You see, the pillar and the ground of truth. So it is a this place, you see, in the church, what happened? That means this truth was lost. Similarly, what did the woman do? Huh? She began to cleanse it, it seems. You see? Why? Marriage is very important. Or else the marriage will get cancelled, no? So future, there won't be any chance of getting married, no? So this is the only one chance for us to, God has given to marry. Jesus Christ, to be with the Lord and reign with him for a thousand years. In future, we won't get any of this opportunity even than if we lose it. So if we have lost it, it is the duty of the church to search it. So when did actually the church search it, if you see, it is during the reformation period that they began to diligently clean the house. You see, huh? in the reformation, what happened? Many people revolted against the Roman Catholic system and came out. So cleansed of the entire false doctrine. You see, how did she search it? How did she cleanse it? You see, how did she search it? If you see, she was hand, having a candle in her hand, it seems. What is the meaning of candle? The lamp? Huh? The word of God. Read, brother. Psalm 1905. Home, brother, can you read? Psalm 1905. Home, brother? Yes. Sorry. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Uh, and the light unto my path, it seems. So as soon as this, uh, you see, uh, the last coin was got. What did that woman do? Immediately, she rejoiced. Uh, and not only that one, she told uh, all her neighbors, uh, you see, to rejoice uh, with me because I have found the last uh, coin. Dear brethren. So, uh, she told to two people, two group of people, one to her, uh, yeah, you see, uh, friends, uh, other thing is to the neighbor. Why tell to both the uh, uh, friends and neighbors, why is this given? It's got a meaning. So, what is the meaning of these 10 silver coins? You see, dear brethren, silver means uh, the word of God. You see, the truth. So, the 10 silver coins means the 10 important doctrines in the Bible. So, let us see which are the 10 important doctrines in the Bible, which uh, if we want to become the bride of Christ, we need to have this one in our what? Uh, not literal head, uh, but inside our head. Uh, in our mind, in our heart, we need to be very clear and be fixed with just 10 coins. If we lose even one of the coins, we can never be the bride of Jesus Christ. What is the first coin? If you see, the first coin is the creation. You see, how did God create Adam? Can anybody tell me, how did God create Adam? He was created from the... Huh? Dust of the ground. Very good. He was created from the dust of the ground. Adam was created from the dust of the ground. You see, and God breathed into his nostrils. In his image, he was created. You see, dear brethren, and he was made to be the king of the earth. He was the first king. God had crowned him to be the ruler of this earth, dear brethren. You see, so who was the first? King, if you see, Adam was the first king of this uh, earth. But uh, today, you see, what does the science tell? What do the people believe? People believe that, uh, you see, the man was created from how? Huh? From a protozoa, from a small amoeba. What happened? Uh, Adam, uh, you see, was created. Uh, and uh, uh, from monkey uh, and the ape, ultimately, what happened is, uh, so man has developed uh, from uh, Stone Age and Iron Age, has come to the computer age. This is what uh, the, you see, the world believes, uh, the Darwin's theory. But this uh, is totally against the word of God. The Bible doesn't say so. You see, the Bible uh, says that a man was created in the image of God. He was a very intelligent person. Uh, but many people, they believe that uh, he was created from the monkey and the ape. So man... Did not have a developed brain at the time, but uh, as the days go went on, his brain began to develop with things. But what does the Bible say? Huh? Adam was in the God's image. He named 
all the animals of this earth. He gave uh, names to all the animals of this earth. And not only that one, you see, can a, a dumb head, a, a, a person who, who doesn't have any wisdom or knowledge, can he give names to all the animals? No. If he has given, that means uh, he is a, you see, a knowledgeable person. And not only that one, you see, Noah. Noah built the ark. You see, how many animals went inside? If you see, all the animals of this world were taken into the ark. Imagine to build such a big ark. Is it so easy? Oh. And moreover, the measurement of the ark, tabernacle, the pyramid are all the same measurements. You see, what did Noah use to build the ark? Read, brother. Genesis 6, 14. Gopal, brother, can you read? Genesis 6, 14. Genesis 6, 14. Make thee an ark of gopher wood. Room shall thou make in the ark, and shall pitch it within, within and without with pitch. See? He made it uh, and, uh, and pasted it with pitch, it seems. That means star. Inside and outside with the star, it seems. Yeah, but then, uh, you see, star means what? Where do we find the tar today? Where do they use it? Tar, tar. Where do you use it? Tell me. You don't use any tar in your country? Yeah? Pitching the road. Very Pitching good, road. brother. Same thing was used in the days of Noah. Imagine, huh? now we have the technology. But how did Noah come to Noah? God had given him the wisdom. See, that is the creation of God. He was not created in a, <laughs> like a ape or a monkey or amoeba. He was created in the likeness of God. You know, see the great pyramid of Giza. We studied about it now. How beautiful, how wonderful it is. Can a dumb monkey build it? It all shows. And Tubal Cain, Jubal Cain. You see, they were all musicians. So this all proves that the people of old were in the, you see, image of God. This is the first coin, you see, the image of God, the creation of God. And the second coin is actually much related to the first coin. You see, all the coins are linked together because on the same strip they are put. The second coin is death. You see, what did God tell to Adam? You shall not eat the, you see, fruit of the tree, forbidden tree. In the day you eat the fruit thereof, what will happen? You shall surely Tell me, you shall surely die. Die. Isn't it? God's all, you shall definitely die. You are taken from the ground and to dust you shall return. Genesis 3, 17 and Genesis 3, 18 and 18. God said, no, cursed is the ground for thy sake. Thorns, thistles shall bring it. You shall, you shall eat the bread by the sweat of thy brow. Isn't it? Every mankind, your brethren, by condemned to death in Adam. All are going to death hmm? through Adam. Individually, nobody were condemned. Everybody were condemned in Adam. Read with the Romans 5 12. Romans 5 12. Hmm. Wherefore, as by one man sin entered into the world, and death by sin, and so death passed upon all men, for that all have sinned. Mm, for all have sinned. Death passed upon all men. For all have sinned. Oh, for one man, what came? Sin entered into the world. And because of sin, what happened to himself? You see, huh? death came. And this death passed upon everybody. Dear. Then, so, if you see, huh? the wages of sin is what? The Bible says, uh, the wages of sin is death. The Bible doesn't say that wages of sin is eternal torture in hell. David said, no. I was shaped in iniquity and in sin did my mother conceive me. This is the second kind. This is the truth about life after death. That there is nothing after death. But what does the people believe today? Eh? What do the people believe? What happened to the soul after death? What do the people believe? Tell me, what do the people believe? Eternal punishment. Ah, isn't it? Soul is immortal, it will go to hell or heaven. What does the Bible say? Does the soul die or not? Soul dies. 
told I, this is the important coin. You need to have it on our head, brother. You see, we should be very clear in uh, these important truths. Uh, yeah? Hell. Hell is a place of burning fire where all the people, sinners are tortured. Uh, Bible doesn't say so at all. Bible clearly tells uh, that hell is a grave in the Bible. Today, the whole world are believing the first lie. Huh? What lie? What did uh, God uh, say to Adam? Huh? If you eat the fruit thereof, you shall surely die. But what did uh, Satan say? If you eat the fruit thereof, you shall surely not die. You see? He just put that word not in between. You see? An entire sentence and meaning itself changed. And today, the whole world are following the word of uh, the devil. That uh, after, you see, death, uh, there is something... Ah, the soul goes here, all the things and all. Eh? So, this is all false doctrine, dear brethren. The doctrine of the devil, you see. This is the doctrine of the gods, children. So, this should be in our mind. And uh, the third coin, you see, that is also related to the second coin. And which is this one? You see, the main topic of the Bible, the ransom. Jesus Christ came to give his life a ransom for all. Therefore, it says now, Mark 10, 45. You see? <laughs> Son of man came to give his life a ransom for all. Why? Because all the people were suffering the wages of sin. That is death. They were all dying. And to redeem all these people only, Jesus came to this earth. Isn't it? Read with her. John 5.28 with her. What did the Bible say? John 5.28. <coughs> Marvel not at this, for the hour is coming, in the in the which all that are in the grave shall hear his voice. Ah, you see? What did Jesus say? Don't be surprised. Uh, all that are in the graves, that means where are everybody? Then the graves only. They shall all rise forth, uh, hearing the voice of the Son of Man. You see? To raise everybody only from the dead, Jesus Christ came to this earth. Therefore, the Bible says, no, you see, what is the will of God? First Timothy, second chapter, three to six. We studied about the first class itself. You see, that this is good and acceptable in the sight of God. Isn't it? Read, brother. Ashish, brother, can you read? Huh? But this is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior. Who will have all men to be saved and to come unto the knowledge of the truth? For there is one God and one mediator between God and man, the man Christ Jesus, who gave himself a ransom for all to be testified in due time. See, who gave himself a ransom for all to be testified in due time. So Jesus came to give a ransom. So what is the word uh, ransom here? It means, you see, it is a Greek word, you see, called Lazar. Anti Lutheran and the meaning of that word is actually a corresponding price. You see, dear brethren, Jesus died not only uh, for Christians, he died for the entire world. Isn't it? First John 2 2, brother. First John 2 2. Oh, brother, can you read? First John 2 2. First John 2 2, brother. And he is the profession for our sins and not for our only, but also for the sin of the whole world. Very good, brother. Jesus is a propitiation for our sins, not only for Christians, but for the entire world. So Jesus died for the entire world. How? The concept of ransom? Through Adam, a death came upon everybody. Jesus, if he died for that Adam, what will happen? In that Adam, everybody will be reading from, you see, death. As everybody went to death because of that Adam. So if that Adam is saved, automatically what will happen now? Through that Adam, everybody will be saved and brought back to life. So this is a very, very important uh, doctrine that Jesus died not only for Christians, but the entire world. Though they are not believing now, they will have the time to believe. In the, you see, thousand year reign of Christ. Very good. Okay. Now let us come to the fourth coin. The fourth coin is called a justification by faith. You see, 
That means we are all sinners in sight of God. So nobody can be standing perfect before God. We are all sinners. We can't stand before God. It is only because of His grace that we are able to stand before God. You see? Let us read Romans 1.17, brother. Romans 1.17, brother. For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith, as it is written, the just shall live by faith. Okay. The just shall live by faith. Not by works. Sir. We can't live by works. Sir. That's what the Lord did. The Lord tried to do everything by works. Sir. Galatians also says, no, if anybody does the works of the law, he shall live by it. But because of, you see, sin, none of the fallen people could keep the perfect law. So law was a failure. Therefore, it says in Romans 3, 21 to 23, all have sinned, come short of the glory of God. So none can be, you see, standing perfect before God. So God made a provision that they may stand before Jesus Christ, you see, and come to his presence through the blood of Jesus. Therefore, we are all justified through Christ. You see, it is grace. Read, brother. Romans 5, 1, brother. Uh, home brother, can you read? Romans 5, 1. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Okay. By faith, we are justified by faith. Not by any works. But today, huh? what is the belief? We need to do so much of rituals, so much of sacrifices how to please God and thus get justified before God. All these things, Bible doesn't say. There is no need for you to walk so many kilometers. There is no need for you to offer so much of huh? offerings, uh, sacrifices. Uh. We are justified only by the blood of Christ. God has given us a robe of righteousness. We are all sinners. Uh. We are all unclean. All our uh, righteousness are uh, as filthy rags. Uh. We can't purchase God's righteousness uh, just by doing some good works. Uh. It is only by His grace. You see? But today, what has happened? Eh? I believe that uh, we need to be righteous by doing good works. You see? How? Confess your sins. Do all the sinful activities and go and confess to your father himself. What will happen? All sins will get forgiven. Or else if you pay some money, put tithes. So put some offerings in the offering box. What will happen now? God will be pleased with you. Is God like manna? No, dear brethren. So all these things existed until Martin Luther, you see, found this coin. Martin Luther was the one who found this coin and revealed it clearly to the whole world, just shall live by faith, not by any of the works. You see, dear brethren, so we have studied about, uh, you see, Martin Luther. Huh? Have you studied, brother, the seven churches and seven angels? Have you studied? No, no, okay, we'll go to study. We'll go to study in the future also how this reformation happened uh, through Martin Luther. Okay, anyway, this is the fourth coin that was uh, actually uh, brought more clarity by Martin Luther. And the fifth coin is sanctification. Sanctification means what? Uh, consecration. The other word for sanctification is consecration. Read, brother. Romans 12 1. Go, brother, read. Romans 12 1. I beseech you, therefore. Brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Ah, which is the reasonable Sunday service, sir? Sunday service, which is the reasonable service, sir? Going to the prayer, lifting for our hands and praying to God, Hallelujah, Amen. That is a reasonable service, sir. That is our morning service, sir. Singing Hallelujah and praises and listening to false doctrines. Is that our service? No, dear brother, that is not the service which God is pleased. 
you see, giving 10% of our earnings. No, that is not the, you see, sacrifice which God is expecting from us. What does the Bible say? Present your bodies. You see, present yourself. Dedicate yourself to God. Dedicate yourself to the truth. Stand for the truth. Live for it. Live a sacrificial life which is holy. You see, that is holy in the sight of God. Acceptable to God. God should accept us. You see, not that whatever we do, that should be acceptable to God. No, that too, God doesn't accept at all. If God has to accept our sacrifice, it is to be only in the way he tells us. Then we can do so many things, but if it is not pleasing to him, that won't be a reasonable service at all. Therefore, the Bible says, what does the Bible say? Huh? Psalms chapter 50, verse 5. Huh? He says, no. Read, brother. Ashish, brother, read. Hmm. Gather my sins together unto me, those that have made a covenant with me by sacrifice. See? Gather my sins together. That means the saints... These are called as the saints. They are to be together. One among the brethren. Who are they? Who are the saints? These are the ones who made covenant with me by sacrifice. You see, even those are the people who made covenant with God by what? Self-sacrifice. Lord, Lord, I come to do thy will. What did Jesus do when he took baptism? It was the same heart condition. Lord, I am coming to do thy will. Same condition, if we do the brethren, then only we will be consecrated. Then only our walk of life will be started to count in the sight of God. Then only we will start walking in the narrow way walk of life. Therefore, Romans 6, 3, it says now, huh? as many were baptized into Jesus, baptized into his death. His death means what, what about death? Sacrificial death. We need to live a sacrificial uh, life uh, as Jesus lived there, brethren. How? He was never with the false doctrines people. He was never with the false people. He lived and he had fellowship, uh, you see, with the people who were pleasing to listen to the word of God, <laughs> who were dedicated to live uh, for God, uh, isn't it? Therefore, Jesus left Jerusalem. Went outside and preached the word of God, dear brethren. So similarly, you see, if we need to be justified before God. You see, we have studied about this one. Yeah? R is the plane of uh, sinners and N is the plane of, uh, you see, sanctify justification. Huh? And, uh, yeah? and uh, N, uh, M is the plane of uh, sanctification. See, R, we were all in the plane of sinners, but by Christ, we are justified. But uh, just uh, justification is not sufficient. We need to go one step more and become the followers of uh, Jesus. So that's what uh, we see here that Jesus uh, took, uh, you see, baptism. When uh, Jesus took baptism, see? see, this was the plane of Jesus uh, getting baptized. So we also need to baptize properly. See, whatever baptism we have taken in the world, that is not actually the original baptism, what the Bible says. Anyway, this is the fifth coin. Now, next, uh, which coin? Coin number what? Are you all there? Huh? Yes, brother. Ah, very good. Sixth coin. Very good, brother. Sixth coin is election. What is this election? So many people believe that uh, already people are selected before their birth, before they are born, even in mother's womb, they are all selected, it seems. You see? Therefore, uh, so many you know, people tell, oh, you are selected even from your mother's womb for this very purpose. They have the end. Hence, uh, they quote, uh, you see, so many scriptures like Revelation 7-4, where they are already sealed. You see? Already sealed on their head. They have the end. Huh? We, are we all selected before our birth? No, if we were all selected before birth, then why should we start reading the Bible? Anyway, our uh, future uh, is already determined and fixed. So, nothing would matter now whether we do good or bad. 
so we can go and live into the world now. No, dear brother, that is not the way Bible speaks. Bible speaks that many are called. Few are chosen. And among them, few are faithful. We know this verse, Matthew 22, 14. You see, many are called. Not all are called. And not uh, all who are called are chosen. Chosen for what? Chosen to run the race. Uh, you see, we need to run the race and win the crown, dear brethren. So, how many prizes are there? How many prizes are there? Only one prize or how many prizes? Home brother, Gopal brother, how many prizes are there? Oh, how many prizes are there? You don't know? How many prizes are there? What, what can you see on the slide? 1,40,000. Ah, that is the prize. So, so many prizes are there. Isn't it? So, church will be rewarded to be part of the lakh and 44,000. So, we will be getting, if we are faithful, we will be part of that lakh and 44,000. There is no only one prize. How many prizes are there? 1 lakh and 44,000 prizes are there. If we are faithful, we can win that prize. Now, if God has called us, what does it mean? It means the seat is still vacant. We can run. No? Therefore, this class of people is chosen, not individuals. Huh? Read Ephesians 1 4, brother. Ephesians 1 4. According as he had chosen us in him before the foundations of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. Oh, you see? According as he had chosen us uh, in him before the foundation of the world. Uh, you see, God has chosen not individuals, dear brother. It says what purpose he has chosen. We should be holy and blameless before him in love. This character is fixed, uh, not individuals. Uh, you see, read one more verse, brother. Romans 8 29. What are they fixed for? Uh, Romans 8 29. Mm. For whom he did. For, for none, he also did uh, pre predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. We are predestinate to be confirmed to the image of his son. This is fixed, not individuals. Not individuals like Raju, not individuals like Gopal, Homer, Ashish are fixed. But the qualification is fixed. If he Achieve that qualification of being the image of Christ, definitely that crown will be ours. So, we need to be very cautious in winning this uh, crown. This is the subject about election. Jesus has brought uh, life and immortality to light. Uh, this immortality, God has promised us if you are faithful to your Good, okay. Now, seventh uh, uh, coin. Seventh coin is what? I uh, uh, hope you are all remembering all the coins. At uh, uh, the end, we'll see who remembers all the ten coins. Uh, seventh coin is the uh, truth about our God. You see? Uh, how is our God? Uh, how many gods do we have? How many gods do we have, brother? Only one God. Only one God. Very good. And Lord Jesus? Who is he? Lord. Mediator. Ah, very good, brother. Yes, he is a mediator. Very good. So he is our Lord, isn't it? But he is our Lord. He has died for us. We all have got to wonderful and due respect to him. He is our mediator. Without him, we can never go to the Father. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Very good. Read with the first Corinthians 8, chapter 5 and 6. First Corinthians 8, chapter 5 and 6. Though there be that are called gods, whether in heaven or in earth, as there be gods many and lords many, but to us there is but one God, the Father, of whom are all things, and we in him, and one Lord Jesus Christ, by whom are all things, and we by him. Ah, you see, what does the Bible say? There is one God. There may be many gods, there are a lot of gods in this world, but to us there is only one God, who is the Father. And there is only one Lord, that is our Lord 
Jesus Christ was born. This is a very, very important doctrine we need to keep in our mind. Never compromise with this one. You see, uh, we know that uh, God has got four important uh, nature. Revelation 4 chapter. Uh, his face was like a lamb. His face was like a flying eagle. His face was like a man. His face was like a lion. What does it mean? Four characters. Lion means power. Man means love. Eagle means wisdom, sharp eyesight. Lamb means they used to sacrifice in olden days to for what purpose? You see? For justice. That signifies justice. So God has got four important characters. Justice, wisdom, love and power. Okay. Yeah, which is the next coin? Coin number what? Huh? Coin number what? Very good. Hate. Hate is the second element of Jesus Christ. We already studied this one. You see, when will Jesus come? When will Jesus come, brother? Gopal, brother, when will Jesus come? He has already come. Very good. He's already come. Are you, you are, when? Home brother, do you know the date when Jesus has already come? Eighteen seventy-four. Very good. Eighteen seventy-four. Very good. Isn't it? So, eighteen seventy-four is the year which our Lord returned to the earth atmosphere invisibly. And Jesus said, "Now." How will the Lord come? He shall descend from heaven with a shout. You see, with a voice of an archangel, with the trump of God. You see, these are all not literal. Not that Jesus is going to come with a little trumpet. Trumpet in the Bible is what? We have seen that one, no? Last trumpet. Seventh trumpet means what? In the book of Revelation, there are seven trumpets for seven churches. And Jesus is going to return when the last and the seventh trumpet is going to be blown. Read Revelation 11.15, brother. Revelation 11.15, brother. And the seventh angel sounded, and there were great voices in heaven, saying, The kingdoms of this world are become the kingdom of, the, of our Lord and of his Christ, and he shall reign forever and ever. See, when the seventh angel sounded, underline it. That is the time the kingdoms of this world were transferred to Christ. So when is the seventh angel sounded? Trumpet sounding. That is the uh, trumpet sound with which Jesus returned. Therefore, we are read about this one in the six. Uh, you see, churches. We'll read again also in coming days. Uh, you see, what did uh, Jesus say about the, for the sixth church? He said, "Behold, I come quickly." But for the seventh church. What did Jesus say? Revelation 3.20 Behold, I stand at the door and knock. He said, for sixth, I'll come quickly. For seventh, what did he say? I'm standing here and knocking here. Therefore, dear brethren, you say, this is the, huh? which coin? Huh? The eighth coin. And Jesus also, uh, you see, spoke about this one in the parable of the ten virgins. Huh? The bridegroom tarried but when did the bridegroom actually come? What time did he come? Do you remember, Gopal brother? At midnight. Very good, at midnight. Midnight means exactly when the 6,000 years ended, the period of sin ended, and the millennium morning was began, that is the time that the bridegroom entered. There was a loud sound. Behold the bridegroom. Who could see? Not all can see because all the city was sleeping. Only the wise virgins could awake and see. If we are of the wise virgins, we can see. And this date, as we already studied, is mentioned in the book of Daniel chapter 12. What is good? Now, let us come to the ninth coin. And this is the ninth coin. You see, dear brethren, the ninth coin is about the thousand-year reign of Christ. The purpose of Jesus' second advent why Jesus is going to come at the second event, if you see, dear brethren, Jesus is going to come not only for simply any reason, but he is going to come 
and reign on this earth for a period of how many years? How many years uh, Jesus will rule? Come brother, how many years Jesus will rule? 1,000. Very good brother. 1,000 years. In 1,000 years, what will he do? You see, lot of activities is going to do. We are going to study all these things in the coming future days. Uh, but we know, the Bible says that Jesus is going to rule for 1,000 years. Read brother, Revelation 20, verse 6. Revelation chapter 20, verse 6 brother. Huh? Blessed and holy is, is he that had part in the first resurrections. On such, the second death had no power, but they shall be pressed of God and of Christ, and shall reign with him a thousand years. They shall reign with him for a thousand years, dear friend. So, God has given the privilege that uh, we can rule with him for a thousand years, dear brother. So, in these thousand years, what will happen? We have studied uh, all the dead people will come back to life. All their ears and eyes will be opened. Huh? Can they understand the Bible in a thousand years? Yes. Yes. All the people who did not learn the truth now will all listen to the truth in thousand years. Now imagine how many people will come to the class initially. You see, eight to nine people. But now, how many people are remaining? You see, these all will learn the truth when in the thousand years they are going to come back to life on the same earth. They shall be resurrected. They shall walk in the highway of holiness. They shall come to the truth. They shall all rejoice in the thousand years. And the whole world will be converted to God. Not only the human beings, but even the animals also will be converted to God. They shall all turn to God. How it was there during the first world, they were all pure vegetarian. Similarly, in the Christ kingdom, they shall all be pure vegetarian. So, so this is the last coin which was actually lost. You see, so the Christians found all the coins, but none of the people could find this coin, the coin of the thousand years. Purpose of... Jesus' second advent, dear brethren. But as soon as, uh, you see, this last coin was found, immediately, what did the woman do? Hmm? What did the woman do? Tell me, what did the woman do? In the parable, we read now, what did the woman do? As soon as she found the last coin, whom did she go and tell? Neighbors and fr friends and neighbors. Very good. Friends and neighbors. Why friends? Why neighbors? Who is friend? Jesus called his disciples as friend. He told, I call you as my friend. You are my friends. So close to them. The friends are the Christian friends. We need to witness about this thousand years to our Christian friends who don't know nothing. Just simply going to the churches, keeping the Bible in their hand and simply believing false teachings. How many people know about these 10 coins, these 10 important doctrines in the Bible? How many people know the purpose of Lord Second Kevin? He is going to rule on this earth. And what is going to rule? He is going to rule on dead bodies? No. All the people are going to come back to life. And after coming back to life, what are they going to do? What are they going to learn? Just to send them back to hell or heaven? No. What is the purpose? This silver coin was supposed to be witnessed to the friends. Not only to the friends. To whom? Neighbors. Who are the neighbors? The whole world. We need to witness not only this one to Christians, dear brethren, but for the entire world. Just go and visit any person who is dead. Though it be any religion, you give them any amount of money or gold or diamonds in this world, they won't be happy. Tell them that dead person is going to come back to life. Don't worry. Don't cry. God shall wipe away all your tears. Everybody shall come back. Even your brother, father, mother, sister, are going to come back to the same earth. They shall live on this earth, the same house, and learn the truth. Just see the reaction. They will be rejoicing it. That is the what the woman did. Rejoice with me. I am so much happy about this thousand years. You also rejoice. Because why? Jesus died. Not only for Christians, he died for everybody. He died not to send people to hell or heaven. 
it is for salvation. Only the church, the faithful church are going to go to heaven. All the rest of the people, dear brethren, so they're going to come back to the same world. This one we need to tell, rejoice. Why? Because my marriage is going to get confirmed. I'm going to the heavenly salvation. God willing, I'll be of the faithful class, of the bread class. But what about you? Don't you worry. God has made a plan for you and you are in it. God has made a salvation for you. That is the last kind of the, the Bible students uh, movement who found this lost kind of and as soon as they found it now, they went and declared to the entire world. Therefore, the teachings, what you are listening now, it can never be heard in any part of the world. Why? Because uh, these teachings uh, are hidden. It is only with the woman who keep it on their head. Uh, daily passing, polishing, dear brethren. Therefore, uh, you see, the last kind. This is also very, very important. We need to do, know where we should not go. <clears throat> you see, this is the second death. You know what is second death? Huh? What is second death? In first death was, huh? was uh, uh, everybody received the first death. Everybody went to the first death because of the sin of Adam. But uh, Jesus gave a ransom and saved us from the first death. But after receiving the salvation from Jesus, if he sin again, then where are we going to go? We are going to go to second death. And what is the qualification for the second death? Let us read, brother. Hebrews 6, chapter, verses 4 to 6, brother. Kindly read, brother. Go, brother, read. Hebrews 6, chapter, 4 to 6. For it is impossible for those who were once enlightened and have tested of the heavenly gift and were made partakers of the Holy Ghost, and have tested the good work, word of God, and the powers of the world to come, if they shall fall away to renew them again unto repentance, seeing uh, they crucify to themselves the Son of God afresh, and put him to an open same. See, these are the qualifications to go to second death. What is it? It says, first uh, once enlightened, Enlightened means what? As we listen to the truth, what will happen? Our eyes are opened. Our eyes are enlightened, no? Seeing the beautiful divine plan. A divine plan of the ages. The thousand year reign of Christ. Our eyes were enlightened. To listen to the subject of soul, hell, eyes were enlightened. You see, to hear the doctrine of the, huh? the Lord's memorial, it used to be taken once a year. Our eyes were enlightened. And after? Tasted the heavenly gift. Which is the heavenly gift? You see, forgiveness of sins. The wages of sin is death. But the eternal gift is, you see, what? The eternal life through our Lord Jesus Christ. This is the gift of God. This is the heavenly gift. Receiving the forgiveness of sins. After receiving the forgiveness of sins, the third is what? Receiving the Holy Spirit. Isn't it? After receiving the Holy Spirit, what will happen? The fourth one, tasting the good word of God. Understanding as we keep on reading, what will happen? We will taste the word of God. There will be a lot of difference uh, how we read the Bible before. There will be a lot of difference how we are reading the Bible now. Isn't it? Huh? Are you all tasting the word of God or not? Huh? Are you all feeling the difference? Huh? Between how you read the Bible and how you read the Bible now. Are you all feeling the difference? Yes, brother. Yes. That is the meaning of tasting the good word of God. David said, taste and see that the Lord is good. Tasting by experience. Tasting, understanding the word of God. That is, that means we are coming to the stage. And what is the last one? The powers of the world to come. Which is the powers of the world to come? The third world. A thousand years. After understanding all this truth, if you say these things are lies, this is all false. And if you leave all these things and go back to the world, go back to the false teachings, what we are doing? We are crucifying the Son of God again on the cross and putting him to hope and shame. One who does that one, 
can never be God's child, dear brethren. The people of Israel crucified Christ once. God did not forgive them. Until 1845 years, 1845 years they were punished. Then only grace of God came upon them. Dear brethren. If he knowing the truth, they are knowing it, it, but we Christians, after understanding the, all these subjects, all these ten coins clearly in our mind, putting it on Edwin's water, putting it in our mind, if you reject all these things are false and go to the world, it means you are crucifying Christ on the cross. You are putting it open shame. These type of people will go to where? Will go to second death. Ones who are consecrated and turn back to God, you see, uh, turn to God and again turn back to the world, you see, they will go to second death. Dear brethren, so it is a very important thing. Now, this will, this second death is applicable even to the world in the thousand years. See, the people will be brought back from sinful life. They need to walk to God. If they don't walk ahead and if they go back to a sinful nature, they will all be going to second death. Isaiah 26, 10, brother. But now it is applicable to us now. But for the whole world, it will be in the thousand years. Isaiah 26, 10, brother. Ashish, brother, can you read? It favor be so to the wicked, yet will he not learn righteousness in the land of uprightness. Will he deal unjustly, unjustly and will not behold the majesty of the Lord? See, in the land of unrighteousness. Uh, he shall till unrighteously, unjustly. In the land of righteousness in the thousand years, if somebody does sinful things, he will go to second death. But now, it is for us. Psalms 37, 10. It says, now, for a little while, the wicked shall be huh? no more. They shall be no more. They can burn be found at all. Revelation 21, 8. Huh? It says, now, huh? read, brother. Revelation 21, 8, brother. Revelation 21, 8, brother. But the fearful and unbelieving and and the abominable and murder, murderers and warmongers and sorcerers and idolaters and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. Which is the second death. Who will not go? Unbelieving, underlined. Those who don't believe the word of God. Liars. You see, dear brethren, we need to believe the truth. Therefore, dear brethren, these are the ten important doctrines we need to keep in our mind. So similarly, you see, ten strings are there. David, when he, you see, used to play that uh, 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 instrument, uh, it used to have ten strings. Uh, uh, David says, no. read brother, Home brother, can you read? Psalms 144.9, brother, can you read? Home brother, can you read? Yes. Psalms I will sing a new song unto thee, O God, upon a psaltery and an instrument of ten strings will I sing praise unto thee. See, ten strings will I sing praise unto thee. Same is repeated again in Psalms 33, 2 and 3. It's got the same meaning. You see, Rebecca, huh? you see, I, Eliezer went with how many camels? To pick up Rebecca, ten camels. She watered the ten camels. We have seen this subject also, no? Uh, ten camels means ten important doctrines. Rebecca to meet Isaac, she used to come only upon the ten camels. She, used to, she was never supposed to get down from the camels. So similarly, if we want to be the church, we need to be upon the camels. She never get down. Then only 
you see can we be a perfect bride of christ read brother home brother psalms 197 read brother psalms 197 read brother home brother hmm. <clears throat> Psalms 19.7. Home brother, you are there? Yes, I am. Um, Psalms 19.7. Hmm. 19.7. The law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. Okay. Law of the word is perfect. It is perfect. It can convert the soul. The testimony of the Lord, it is sure, making wise the simple. If we are faithful, dear brother, and definitely we can be of that class. So, but we need to keep how many coins? Ten coins upon our head. Head means what? In our mind. We need to trust and believe these ten important doctrines. Now, can anybody tell me which is the first coin? Just two minutes. We'll justify it. First coin. What is the first coin, brother? Creation. Very good. Second coin? Death. Very good. Third coin? Ransom. Very good. Fourth one? Justification. Good. Fifth one? Sanctification. Very good, brother. Sixth one? Selection. Yes. Seventh one? God. God. Eighth one? Second advent of Jesus Christ. Very good. Ninth one. Uh, the lost coin. Thousand years of reign of Christ. Very good. And the last tenth coin. Second death. Second death. Now, which is the last? Uh, the lost coin. Which is the lost coin? Home brother. Which was the coin that was got lost? Hundred. A thousand years. Very good. Thousand years. Okay. Very good, brother. So. These are the yeah, 10 important doctrines. Uh, you need to keep it in mind. Okay, brother. Very good. So, any doubts, any questions in this class?